think so. <laughs> yeah. Oh, listen to this. The Chemical Reporter. Hi, glad you could join me. It's Jeff, the Chemical Reporter. Today's question comes from Rodolfo in Buenos Aires. He wants to know, how is artificial rain produced? When the People's Republic of China celebrated its 60th birthday in October of 2009, the country's leaders didn't want any rain to ruin the festivities. That's why on the evening before the Grand Parade, the Chinese shot rockets into the sky that contained a mixture of silver iodide and acetone. And it worked. Although the sky was gray and full of clouds at dusk, the next day the sun came out right on schedule. So, can we really make it rain at will? Some meteorologists say it's an illusion. But even so, there have been plenty of attempts all over the world to influence the weather with chemical tricks. In Thailand, for example, what's called the Phon Luang, or King's Rain, is aimed at preventing drought, while what are known as hail plains regularly take to the skies in Germany to subdue potential hailstorms. To understand the theory of rainmaking, you first have to grasp how rain arises naturally in the environment. It all starts when water down on the Earth's surface evaporates and rises as water vapor into the atmosphere. When the vapor hits cooler layers of air, it reverts to its liquid phase. In other words, it condenses. Countless minuscule water drops or ice crystals form, drifting through the air to form clouds. But water vapor doesn't condense all on its own. The droplets have to form around what scientists call cloud condensation nuclei, more commonly known as cloud seeds. You see, the atmosphere is full of tiny drifting particles collectively called aerosols. An aerosol particle might be a mote of dust, a particle of soot, or a salt crystal. The H2O molecules in the water vapor adhere en masse to the surface of the aerosol, which causes liquid to form. In that sense, the aerosol particle acts as the seed for a water droplet, which eventually swells into a raindrop. Other droplets merge with the growing raindrop until it becomes too heavy to float in the air anymore. Drawn by gravity, it falls back to the surface of the planet as rain. Cloud condensation nuclei are, therefore, the key to creating artificial rain. In theory, if you increase the number of aerosol particles in the right layers of the atmosphere, then you could make a cloud form and rain fall. With fine-tuning, you could even theoretically make it rain at a specific place at a specific time. That's the basic idea that underlies the concept of artificial rain. Rain clouds are seeded with additional aerosol particles, often a mixture of silver iodide and acetone that is fired up into the cloud with a rocket or sprayed out of an airplane. Silver iodide is what is known as halide, a salt that includes a halogen atom. It's highly insoluble in water, which is why the substance is mixed with acetone, a solvent that dissolves salts. When silver iodide is released in clouds, it forms huge numbers of tiny salt crystals that can act as seeds for water droplets. And these will eventually form raindrops and fall to Earth. At least that's according to the theory. Scientists are still arguing about whether or not it really works. Then there's a question of how environmentally friendly artificial rain is, but I know of a really easy way to make sure it rains in a fun way. Just throw a handful of confetti! That's all for now. Until next time, make sure to stay out of the rain. This is Jeff, the Chemical Reporter, signing off. Do you have a question concerning chemistry in your everyday life? Ask the Chemical Reporter and send an email to chemicalreporter at easf.com. BASF, the chemical company.